welcome you all uh, for today's talk. And today's talk, as you would have seen from the slides, is three must-have habits uh, for a healthy new you. So I wanted to talk about a little bit about the importance of today's talk and how this can be completely transformational for many of you. Uh, so my name is Ram Prasad. I am part of the Sharon Dubai team. And my life with Sharon has started in 2015. And before that, a little bit of a backstory. In 2010, I lost my father. And I lost my father because of diabetes. And he suffered in the last few months, in the last few days, with so many complications. And I was so happy to be with him. And I observed every day he suffered and every complication he had. And I was there till the last dying moments. And that made a very deep impact. That was 2010. And a few years passed. And then I came back to Dubai where I was working that time. And I still do. And uh, in 2015, that's almost five years later, I happened to attend one talk. And that talk is by Dr. Nandita. And it was an awareness about diabetes. But that talk completely transformed my life. And that talk has given me all the answers I was searching but did not have. And all the answers many doctors, including my own sister, who is a surgeon, could not give. I got all that clarity within just that one hour. And I, today, when I look back, I look at that one hour of talk as something of the sort of enlightenment related to health. Because everything before I had some concepts or opinions, belief systems about health, and what I hold now are completely radically different. So that way, it is life-changing for me. And since then, I have been enjoying extraordinary health. You couldn't believe I am more healthy than I was in college and more energetic than I was in school. And uh, all thanks to a really healthy lifestyle. And the same talk and this particular talk can also be, also be that such talk for you, provided there are three conditions. The first and foremost is that you give me total attention in the sense like we are now committed to each other for the next one hour, right? We as well make the best use of it. So keep yourself completely undistracted, total attention in the sense like shut off the phones, maybe close the door, tell everyone, okay, next one hour I'm totally busy in the sense that I'm focusing on just one aspect on a very important priority task of my life and that is health. And without health, nothing else is you can enjoy. So it is a no brainer, right? The second aspect is being open. Some of the talks, uh, thoughts we're going to talk about today could be uh, different from what we are doing now. So it could think that, oh, he's saying something strange. I never did that. Okay, is it some, some, maybe some things might appear weird. Okay, but still be open because unless we are open, unless we allow new things to come into our life, we may not get let go of the past things which are probably not getting the results. So being open, and of course, I'm not saying to follow blindly whatever I say or any, anything which Sharon says. Have that uh, openness of questioning always in the mind. But however, be open to an idea, a new idea, which I'll say, oh, maybe what he's saying, there's some truth in it. Let me test it. Let me experience whether there is real truth in it. Maybe I'll try for a week, maybe a month, maybe three months. And then I'll decide whatever he's saying, there is truth. Hence, I will follow. It is getting my results. Hence, I will follow. So being open is very, very important. Without that, okay, it may not help. And finally, the last part is being completely engaging in the sense that they say, as per some scientific study, when you involve yourself in a talk or a seminar, complete with more senses. For example, you're seeing me, you're hearing me. Then you also involve and type in a chat or maybe sometimes talk. Then you are involving multiple emotions, also the emotion of listening and the emotion of connecting to the topic so multi-sensory uh, involvement will give you learning multiple, uh, multiple fold. So as well, make use of it. So anytime ask your question, whether in a poll, whether in a chat, do respond because it's in your interest, you get more benefit of this particular one hour talk. Okay, so let's come out of the shells. Let's be open. Let's make some changes. Even if it appears a little uh, not in the comfort zone, let's step out of it this new year. This is the day for you. And uh, okay, so that's about the talk. So let's make this talk as useful as possible. Now, before I get to uh, the core topic and what we are going to cover today in just one slide, 
So I wanted to talk a little bit more about the importance of health. So particularly, uh, I wanted to ask you and reflect because most of us have been there for, let's say, let's say we are in 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s. We have seen a few decades of years pass by, right? So if you look back and see how has health of you, your family, and the people around you, your friends, and even across the country and the whole world, how has the situation of health has changed in the last few decades? So what I wanted to say is that in general, we have advanced hospitals, ex extraordinary sophisticated equipment. We have so many hospitals, so many doctors, and so much has science has progressed, but however, our state of health has worsened. And that gives you a clue, something is wrong. Unless we do something about it, we might also fall prey. We might also become to that majority of people who are falling sick. Maybe we are already getting some symptoms. So it is time for us now to take action and correct that so that we don't uh, change our health destiny. We are now seeing so many people bedridden and then they can't do anything about it. Many people are having so many pills. Many people are having chronic diseases. We don't want to be one of them because we are also doing what they did then we might also get it within no time, right? It may not be there now, but it might happen. So it is, uh, hence we want to take those corrective actions. So if more many people are falling sick, despite so much advance in technicals, we something seriously wrong. And that something seriously wrong, one of the most important contributing factors is nothing but food. Do you agree? So there are so many factors to help. Okay, for example, we also need to exercise. We need to have a stress-free life. We need to have positive thinking. We need to uh, go have good sleep. So there are more, many factors to help. But however, one of the most important things is food. Do you agree? Food is one of the most important things. So food is one of the most important things. And also interestingly and ironically, many people are also confused about what is a good food. Unfortunately, even the most uh, harmful or unhealthy companies are also saying we also have a healthy version. For example, a cola company says we have a diet cola. A chicken company says we have a healthy chicken. So everyone is saying healthy and it's confusing us even further. Hence, it's very, very important who to trust, what to follow, and more importantly, can we listen to our own body, which gives a lot of clues and which gives a lot of uh, signals and signs that are we on the right track or not. Okay, at every food you can actually feel whether that is helping you or harming you. Okay, that's a very interesting statement. I want you to think about this. Every food we take, right from the first drink of the day, whatever you have, till the last meal of the day, every bite, every single dish on our plate has either harms you or helps you. Okay, so it is nothing like it stays the same. So, so every food, unless you think about it, where is it coming from? What does it have? How does, how, do I, how does it, not only how does it taste, how does it look, how like good, does it also feel good and also do good to me, my body and my mind. Okay, those are the thoughts we have to keep on questioning. And then of course, after a point, you will make your own system and then you follow it. And then obviously you'll get your best results. And what we are aiming for is perfect health for the rest of our life. Nothing short of that. Perfect health means not going to hospital, not visiting a doctor, not taking a medicine, you will save all the medical bills and you will be a perfect life. And of course, more importantly, we enjoy life. Enjoying life and the most spirit visit is to be in good health. There may be a lot of people who are extremely wealthy, a lot of people who have power, fame, but if they don't have the right health, then all that life they, can, they can't even enjoy. Hence, we have to have our priorities right, particularly on the first day of the year. Okay, that's the whole point about the importance of health. Now that you understood the importance of health, let me make one very bold promise. The promise is that the system we are going to discuss today are three simple habits. These are powerful. Some of you may feel that it's a little difficult, but I'll, see, I'll let you know how to make it so easy and so, so that you can make a transformation quite quickly. And this is the, these are the same three habits which have helped thousands of thousands of people who follow Sharon change their lifestyle radically get rid of diabetes and we have heard some in the chat some people have reversed their diabetes a few of them are already here and there are thousands and thousands more you can see their testimonials on our youtube channel on our website and many places and uh, not just diabetes blood pressure heart disease cancer autoimmune diseases we have examples live examples of many of them okay so this is that powerful these are the same three habits which can also help you and will help you 
And second, I wanted to share a simple story from my own life, from my own aunt. Okay, there are thousands of them, but however, because when you see from your own close relatives or home families, your belief system goes way up. So let me tell you briefly about the story of my aunt. So last year, uh, that is exactly one year back in last December, I visited India after a long time, uh, after a long gap. So I was catching up with as many relatives as possible. I visited one of my aunts. I generally asked about how is your health? And she said, I'm fine, I'm all good. And then I said, okay, should be good, that's nice. And then a few weeks later, I suddenly came to, got a call from her son, who is my co-brother, and saying that she's not well. And I was shocked. Then I came to know she's having multiple ailments. One is diabetes, blood pressure, a uh, little bit of acidity, and most importantly, now she even has a heart problem. So she had a little bit of a chest pain here, and she visited a specialist doctor in the ER place. He's actually a heart surgeon. And they did all the tests, a lot of tests, angiogram, echograph, so many things they have done. And finally, they came out with a shocking diagnosis. And that is, your arteries are blocked 90% and you need an urgent bypass surgery. So that was really shocking to her because they thought, okay, I'll take a tablet or maybe injection and then the chest pain will go away. But whereas now the diagnosis comes, arteries are blocked 90%. And she didn't even know till the 90% are blocked to that extent. And and it is an urgent bypass surgery within three days, which means they cut open the rib cage and work directly on the heart. And with so many complications or so many other ailments going side by side, it is obviously a high risk operation. And anyone who undergoes a heart, particularly a heart operation, particularly a bypass operation, their life is shortened, which is the longevity is reduced. And that too, if you have complications, and then you might have to go to multiple bypasses and not just one bypass. So luckily for her, and I came to know about this the very next day after this diagnosis. And I said, just give me one day, I'll get you the best appointment from an alternate doctor, the doctor I believe, who doctor who believes in 100% nutrition-based reversal. And then you decide whether you want to go operation or not go on operation. So then I stepped in, I got uh, Sharon doctor's appointment. Then we put her on this uh, complete Sharon's uh, healthy lifestyle, particularly these, particularly these three habits we're going to talk about. And then slowly, slowly, and she was so committed. She didn't want to go operation herself because she knew that there's a risk there. And then not even the cost of the operation, cost of the operation itself is a huge amount. And then more than that, the risk to the life and the risk inconvenience and the suffering. So, and she was very clear, okay, whatever you tell me that too, because I'm from the, within the family and then she had trust in me and that, okay, let me try this. This seems uh, maybe I'll adopt and change. And she adopted very fast. And she didn't even know any English. And I was the translator between the doctor and her. And I told her, okay, call me anytime, whatever you need. Even if we have to do a Zoom call for each recipe, one by one, we'll do it. So I guided her and then was there on all the consultations. And now, slowly, slowly, then diabetes got stabilized, blood pressure got stabilized, the arteries, I think, probably must, must have got unblocked. But now, where she was not able to walk for 50, 100 meters, now she's climbing stairs. Now it's exactly one year now. And we completely bypass the bypass surgery. No more surgery. Surgery saved. And uh, she's hale and hearty. Of course, she still has on a few medicines. So she's still, okay, now I'm going to see what, what else she needs to do, what else she is missing so that she can come back 100% on track. So that's a beautiful story. I was guiding thousands of people already in the area where I am and that I do potlucks and I guide so many programs. But when it happened in my own family and that too, a complete success story where we avoided a surgery, which was urgent. And it made me like really like a miracle. I saw other miracles in other lives, but it happened so close by. Then my trust and conviction got so much that I thought this is such a beautiful and uh, beautiful message. And this should go to as many people as possible. In fact, one of my life's mission is to spread just this part of it. Help as many people as possible uh, because this awareness itself is not there for many people and they need that guidance. And when my aunt got that guidance, she took action and within uh, very quickly, and then she is able to achieve a miracle which was otherwise not possible. Okay, that's the power of these three habits. So I hope you now are really legally looking forward to it. I'm simply simplifying this because some people feel that, okay, we ask them to stop this, stop that, start that. So it becomes complicated, but I'll simplify it to such an extent. Even if you do one habit starting tomorrow, maybe you can even do some things today itself. 
and that will have an impact within very no time. Okay, just pay 100% attention. So let's get started. I have teased you enough. So we'll get to, uh, uh, yeah, agreed. Yeah, most of the foods are marketing game tricks, I agree. So now let's get to the, the core topic. Okay, we are going to cover just five points. The first thing is we already covered just now, the importance of healthy habits. And without those health, we already know that uh, we can't enjoy life. So it is very critical for our own happiness. And then we are going to cover habit number one, then habit number two, habit number three. And finally, if you really want to take action and make this easy to follow and make the transition quickly within the very first month in January or maybe in, in one or two months, then we have a beautiful challenge called a three-week challenge or a 21-day challenge, which a lot of people have about 150, 200 people have undergone in the last uh, one year. And they've got some amazing results, which I'll share with you. Okay, this is the structure. Okay, before first, I wanted to start with a very beautiful, powerful thought. Uh, this is from, uh, I think from BKs. So very nice thought I come across on social media. I thought I'll share this. At, let the start of a new year, not merely mean a date change. Let it cause a shift within you, a new year, new me and a new beginning. So beautiful. So every day or every year we have a new year, but unless we take some action consciously with a plan, nothing happens. It becomes just a date change. But if you take action, it, in, it can become a huge shift within you. Okay, so that's a beautiful thought. So with that thought, we'll begin. And the second powerful thought I want to give you is that habits are everything. So whether we succeed or we fail, the most, most important reason is habits. And of course, we are now talking about food habits. So hence, we need to see how can we inculcate a habit which is sustainable for life, not just something I do for a week or for a month or something like that, because something is good, we should be doing like the whole life. And that's when you can really enjoy. So keep that at the back of your mind. So the entire goal of our thing is to make this a sustainable habit. Okay, why I'm sharing this beautiful slide, which is a short clip of about two minutes, it explains the state of affairs with respect to health all over the world. Okay, we have discussed already in the chat briefly, but let's see a clipping which has very powerful impact. It's just two minutes, and then we'll go further for that from there. If you're not able to hear the sound, Dear let me know. diary, today I feel very sad and I want to eat everything. The problem is that we are not eating food anymore. We are eating food like products and they are adorned. They are made to look better and smell better so that people are attracted to them. It's not your fault. You're programmed to put on fat whenever there is food available. But now there's a lot of food available, but it's the wrong kind. Sugar is in everything. In America, we're eating about 22 teaspoons of sugar a day. Even the milk hasn't escaped. So let me just show you. One kid, just for five years of elementary school, sugar, just from milk. You might as well be rolling up the kid's sleeve and putting in heroin because it's the same. I was 31 when I realized I don't know how to take care of myself and I am sick. So I had to go back and learn all the things that I wish I had known as a child. One thing which I was really afraid to face up to was changing what I put into my mouth. I've never heard of a raw food restaurant. Raw food, how do you cook raw food? I thought vegan was a planet. What we're talking about is a real diet in the sense of what a species needs. When we get onto our real diet, we don't have to think about these things anymore. What do you think the body's gonna do? It's not gonna reject this at all. It's gonna look and say, now I'm on board. Now you're good to me, let me shine for you. Okay, so that was a very short clip to say, we have a lot of food available all over like in the supermarket, online foods, at every place we can think of, so much more choice than when we were small. But unfortunately, it's of the wrong kind. When you look at it, then you will see, now we are going to discuss about what is the food which gives us a real nutrition, which is our species supposed to eat, and what are we eating, and what are the, where are the harmful things coming in. Okay, so that's the purpose of showing you, and those, some of the people we have seen in that video are real top-notch experts in whole plant-based food. And uh, those are the people you can really trust. Okay, so coming back to uh, our topic for the day, which is uh, uh, the three must-have habits. Okay, we have talked about, we have adequately covered what you call 
the importance of health. Now we'll get to the first food habit. And when we talk about this food habit, uh, I want you to first look at, uh, let me see what we have here. So, uh, okay, I'll give you a context for this for food habit and then I'll say the habit itself. Okay, when we say something is extremely nutritious, okay, we are going to look at two types of food. One type of food is food which has the highest nutrition, which means whatever the body needs, it is there, which means that's the best food. Okay, some people might call it superfood or whatever it is. It has to have that nutrition so that the body gets what it requires. Okay, that's the first way to look at food. The second way to look at food is that the food I'm taking, does it by any chance have something harmful, which is harming my body? These are the only two ways you can make sure that the food is the best for you. One, is it doing good for you, which is in terms of nutrition? Second, does it have any harmful things so that I can avoid? Okay, the first habit is got to do with the first aspect, which is nothing but which food has the highest possible nutrition. When we say something has got very high nutrition, obviously it has to check mark all the check boxes about what are those nutrients and does it have as many as possible? Okay, and many of you have identified uh, fruits obviously has a lot of nutrition. Greens have very high nutrition. And when you combine the two, you have an amazing drink that is called the green smoothie. So most of you have already identified both the items and you, you haven't even identified green smoothies. I'll explain to you exactly why that is extremely nutritious. In fact, we call it the most nutritious drink. So, and then you can try it out in yourself. We had a one big challenge, which many of you have uh, undergone some time back. And you got just one habit, that smoothie habit alone has made a huge difference to many people. Imagine you do all the habits uh, we talk about. Okay, now uh, let me explain to you briefly what that uh, smoothie, green smoothie we are talking about. And that is part of the fast food habit. Okay, I'll, food habit is a little bit broader than just the smoothie. But I will explain to you what is a green smoothie and why is it the most nutritious and why is it part of the food habit number one? It's a very must have habit. And what does it briefly say? It effectively has only two things and that is nothing but greens and fruits. As you can see in this ingredients, on the left side we have greens, on the right side we have pineapple and bananas which are fruits and nothing else. And of course you have a little bit of a water to blend all of them together. So if you research, greens have the highest possible nutrition. So getting the energy directly from the sun and then they're the, in the food chain, they're right at the beginning. So if you get food directly from the greens, it has a very high nutrition. But however, there is one problem. And the problem is all these greens have nutrition, but their cell walls are very hard and which are very difficult to break up, which means you have to chew a lot. And sometimes we may or may not be able to chew them if sufficiently to get all that nutrition into, our, into whatever we are into our body. And hence, when you blend it, all that cell walls break up and the nutrition comes into our drink and that becomes super nutritious. But however, the greens are not so easy to taste and to gulp them directly. And hence we add the fruits, which are also highly nutritious, very tasty, very sweet and pulpy. And you combine the two, you've got an amazing drink. And that is the green smoothie. And this is the concept behind this. And we'll go a little bit deeper into this. And then how, what do you do for the greens? We can pick any green, like what you see here. It could be mint, it could be palak, it could be amaranth. It could be dumpstick leaves, curry leaves, coriander, basil, tulsi, dumpstick leaves, any leaf, just a handful of them, each day a different set of leaf. Okay, that's the green part. And then the fruits, you have normally bananas almost uh, every day because bananas are sweet and they're, and they're creamy and pulpy and tasty. And then on top of that, you add one other fruit. It could be pineapple, it could be papaya, it could be pulpy fruits, maybe goa or mangoes when they're in season. Chikus. So whatever fruits you like, uh, tasty and nutritious, and all fruits are like that, except melons. Melons are too watery. We normally don't mix them in the smoothies. You have them directly if you want. So that's the only a couple of simple rules. And of course, you have them on empty stomach. And don't mix anything else. Okay, that's a simple green smoothie for you. And this you can start immediately. And we have some recipes on our website, uh, Sharon India, if you can Google it and then get there, you, will, uh, you can start immediately. And this will give you the highest possible nutrition. And why do we say it has got the highest possible nutrition? Let's dig a little bit deeper. So what does it have? When you talk about nutrition, obviously it should have vitamins, right? Vitamins, we all know, play a huge role in our health. So obviously that's one of the important part. It has got plenty of vitamins in its most natural form. Obviously it has minerals, calcium, 
uh, iron and all the minerals what we need are there in these greens and of course the fruits as well and then of course fiber fiber is so important that most of the foods we eat these days unfortunately you don't have fiber and fiber is a very important element in our digestion it keeps our gut clean and uh, and that is is there as well and plenty of it is there and of course we have enzymes and some of the people people ignore enzymes are which will make us our food digest by itself we don't need to add something else to digest the food because the food itself will come with what is required to digest it and these are nothing but enzymes and these enzymes are lost are for for that matter the vitamins the minerals they are also lost when you heat the food this being raw entire thing is completely intact so that's the importance of this green smoothie and now moving further it even has water within the within the food which is natural and it has antioxidant these are the ones which fight any inflammation which is coming from outside so it will make your body strong and of course uh, we have phytochemicals we have chlorophyll which is almost similar to a, our blood uh, molecules and uh, of course we also have the uh, the macronutrients which are available in uh, higher quantity which is carbohydrates proteins and uh, essential fats so many people think that they doesn't have proteins even the greens and the foods also have proteins so there again the another beautiful thing is when you take food in the most natural form all the balance is in the perfect balance nature already has decided what should be higher what should be how much should be carbs how much should be vitamins so it's all in the perfect proportion we don't need to extract something distort it increase something decrease something no need to tamper it because nature already knows what is the perfect balance for us and this is the right way to have in its most natural form and this is the reason we say is the complete nutrition or the highest possible nutrition and you take it the first thing in the day then even if you sleep a little bit here and there rest of the day you are at least got what you need so your cravings will reduce you don't feel like eating junk food and you lose your weight because your fiber fills you up it can be even a complete meal replacer of course if you are hungry you can have breakfast and other things uh, okay but this is the reason why it is most nutritious okay moving further what else can have similar nutrition of course we are looking at salads some of you have already talked about veggies and salads salads mostly raw sometimes a little little bit of like for example like uh, some chanas could be cooked but uh, most of them is raw for example most of them here as you can see is raw or soaked and if you make this as a habit and if you have this in the every main meal for example lunch and dinner if you start with a salad and then do other cooked food then you get a lot of nutrition because of the same reasons a lot of nutrients we just discussed also come into that okay and then of course we are also talking about fruits whole fruits many of you have said fruits have a lot of nutrition we are absolutely right yes eat fruits as a snack whenever you feel hungry keep a ton of fruits right available right in front of you so that any time you feel hungry or get tempted go pluck one apple or a, or a goa or something and take a bite and that's how you enjoy your highest possible nutrition okay so effectively we are now coming to the first habit number 1 habit number 1 is you must have a lot of raw food in your diet and raw food will come from these three main categories one is green smoothies and whole fruits and of course salads so if you implement these three together we call it increasing your raw food and this itself will do wonders some people even go to the extent of having only this food at least once in a year once in a week or maybe sometimes they fast on only smoothies they fast on fruits so there are some people who try that and then of course they also get very good results but however if you can somehow make it at least 30% of your food as raw food maybe gradually work towards 50% and you can still enjoy your cooked food if you would like to have so uh, okay so that's habit number 1 okay now i said okay the first habit is all about increasing the highest possible nutrition you got now adequate amount of it right okay that will take care of it that itself will do wonders in just the green smoothie itself did miracles for many of the participants of our previous programs if you do all the three then you are pretty good and you will see uh, pretty good results very soon okay now let's get to uh, the habit number 2 habit number 2 is very interesting and it's a little difficult subject and but let me see how i can make it simple for you so some of people say oh what are you saying i can't stay without this i i i already eat this how can you tell me to stop this that and all that but just for a few minutes just for the next 10 minutes i want you to be completely open and say okay what if ram saying is true what if sharan saying is getting results let me also see and observe if it doesn't work for me and then i'll go back to what i eat all all the time so stay with me for this very important habit and this habit will remove the harmful things which are coming in your food 
Now we are going to talk about the harmful stuff which is coming in your food. And for that, I need to be, really briefly explain the concept of Sharon. Sharon stands for a beautiful acronym called Sanctuary for Health and Reconnection to Animals and Nature. What it means is that we don't have to do a lot of things to get healthy. We only need to see, okay, whatever I am doing, am I doing it in the most natural way or not? Does my body agree with it? Does my nature and law of nature agree with it? That's the only thing I have to give it a thought. If it is against nature, I do need to think for myself and agree or disagree, do my research, and then accordingly take my action. Then you become the master of your destiny, master of your health. Okay, so now this habit, I want you to get in touch with your natural instincts. So I'll show you some pictures. You need to tell me or whether that is natural, what does your body and mind say? Okay, what do you feel like doing? Okay, let's get to the game. Okay, it looks like a nice game, uh, but let's get into it. So, okay, here it is. Okay, let's get involved and let's get the best benefits. Okay, now we are talking about food habit number two. Before I say the habit, I want to give you the context for the habit, which is nothing but instincts. Okay, have you ever seen, been to an orchard, whether it is a apple orchard, mango, mango orchard, or any orchard, where there are a lot of nice juicy fruits, and what do you feel like doing? Okay, now let's look at the next slide and see what do you feel like doing? Okay, let's say you come across a nice pet, like a hen or chicken or a cat or a dog. What do you feel like doing? So do you feel like doing exactly like this small child is doing? Okay, you don't feel like eating. You want to let it go. Yeah, you want to pet it. You want to hug it. You want to uh, you feel like another being just like us, innocent, and uh, we play with them. Okay, this is the same way. And we don't feel like bouncing on it ripping about the figure feathers and then frying it, cutting its neck and then eating it, right? That's not our natural instinct. So some of us might have done, even I have done when I was 30, 40 years old, uh, back. So, so now that was not our instinct. Something in us feels that, oh, that is also a living being. So how much pain it might have? Do I need to cause so much violence to another being just for my few food? I have plenty of food who don't feel that pain. So... Okay, that's what we need to think. Okay, chicken is just not for the sake of it. Someone says that it's a food and comes in a nice package, comes in a tasty masala. Okay, you think that it's a food. Please think it is not our food. Does your natural instinct to go and pluck it? We don't have teeth which will rip open the muscle or of those another being. Okay, those are the things we need to examine. Okay, now let's go a little bit further. Now let's look into a little bit be deeper about some things we might, uh, some of us, many of us might be doing it. Even I did till seven years back. Okay, that's about milk. Let's talk about a little bit about the milk. And for that, I want to talk about showing you some pictures. Tell me whether this is natural for a nice kitten like this to have milk from its mother, from their mother. Is it natural or unnatural? A young one always takes mother to grow on uh, from their mother's milk, right? Okay, let's move on to another species. Okay, this time it's a dog. The puppies, the cute little puppies, are enjoying milk from their mother. Is it natural or unnatural? Okay, so do uh, do reply. Okay, yeah, thank you, thank you for that. Okay, how about rats? Rats are also mammals. They also feed milk to their young ones, and these young ones are getting milk from their mother. So this is also natural, right? Okay, how about the next one? A calf getting milk from mother cow. Is this natural? This is something we always see um, in dairy farms, we see in uh, villages, we see uh, everywhere, and we have farms around. Many people do domesticate cows, and then hence we see this, right? So we see this very often, natural too. It's very natural, exactly. But how about this? Okay, let's look at the next one. Is this natural? Think, take a very close look and tell me, is this natural or unnatural? What do you think about it? A man, whether he wears a suit or not, whether he milks and then whether he takes it in a glass or it goes directly to the udder and then takes, it is the same act, right? This is obviously unnatural. But exactly that's what we are doing. And we are doing because someone told us, someone put it in a glass, someone mixed sugar, someone mixed hot licks or compliant, and heated and then gave it and the nice model started looking. And then they, they, they told this is food and we started having it. Please think for a while, is this natural? The very fact that it is unnatural, whether it comes in a bottle or a nice package, it comes with sugar and doesn't come with sugar, it is against nature. And milk is given only by a 
young uh, a mammal whether it's human species or anyone only when there is young young one is there's a young baby is delivered and only for a short time milk is high growth food to make us grow very fast double our weight and things like that and if you go against nature we obviously have to suffer the consequences the protein which is is then is a, a protein of a different animal just look at about the protein okay so let me show you very interesting statistics about this look at very closely here here we are comparing very many mammals humans horses cows goats dogs cats and even rats and left side we have uh, how many milligrams per liter of the protein and the right side we have the time that mammal or species takes to double their weight humans we take approximately about 120 days about 4 months to double their weight and horse is about half of that cow is about one third of that uh, and uh, and rats are much less suppose if you take a protein from coming from the milk of some other mammal and give it to a human being imagine the impact it has it causes very high growth because that is what is supposed to grow and if you have a growth which is unnatural it might lead to very uncomplicated situations we have lactose intolerance because the body is telling it is not our protein reject it reject it and if you keep having it further and you are suppressing your body's nature and obviously it has a consequence somewhere in future okay so that's what we need to think so human protein is the only protein we should have and we should have milk from only our mother only when we are small after we are weaned away then we don't need milk at all if at all we feel like having milk there are plenty of milk is available uh, from plant sources and this is what that milk is i only said stop milk from one species which is let's say cow, cow milk or a buffalo milk but you have we have coconut milk you have almond milk you have oat milk you have milk from almost all nuts and seeds if they are soaked and blended you get very nutritious milk and that is so tasty you will never even go back for the cow milk okay only that we are not aware so to summarize this whole thing uh, we are basically saying meat is not our food and only plant based food is our food whether we look at our teeth when we look at our digestive system whether we look at our instincts whichever way you look at and even these animals are being fed with so many harmful things if you imagine if you see what is in that food you will never even touch it there's so many gross things which are in that flesh and other things besides so many harmful chemicals which come in see all of us are having uh, let's say we tell our mothers uh, not to eat this not to eat that because when you are feeding and breastfeeding and uh, maybe the baby will get that uh, uh, what call it maybe burps or gas or maybe something else so we are so careful about what the mother eats we even tell her that feed in a very calm environment maybe play some music maybe uh, so maybe in a devotional state and like that because all her feelings not just the milk and the nutrition even her feelings and vibrations go to the child but now imagine now we are drinking milk of a cow or a calf or some other species and we don't know that animal what has eaten they are being milked with machines and their udders are sore and they have antibiotics given they have pus they have blood in that milk and they even fed with so many things and calves are being taken away and killed and the mother is weeping and in frustration and all that negative vibration violence desperation frustration is coming to us and obviously we are feeling having the feelings of hatred conflict in our families it somewhere there is coming from there you stop milk just for a trial for one week and see you meditate and see how deep your meditations can be how smooth your relationships can be so you become calm and you become happy for no reason and that's the impact of milk we'll go deeper into this afterwards but now let me summarize this health habit number 2 which is eat only plant based which means you go completely meat free and dairy free start with one week maybe try for one month and within one month to three months you will have a huge changes whatever you are having any health problems if at all you are having they get stabilized slow by slowly uh, and you will see a huge changes so experiment on your own by yourself then you will come to know if it's not true then you go back you can always easy to go back right but difficult to try think that you are on a fast think you are in a new year you are a new mission you want a healthy new you how can it be if you go for the same old habits okay that's the uh, the power powerful habit number 3 uh, sorry two so now let's move on to uh, habit number 3 okay now that we have seen the harmful things coming from meat and milk we eliminate that half or maybe 60 to 70% of the harmful things are gone but there is one more source 
which is getting the harmful things and that is what you will see in habit number three okay let me show you that habit number three okay this is the final habit and this is where we are getting the harmful stuff okay let me show you why is this harmful as you can see uh, there is a study from times of india which says that more people eating junk food are is is killing people than even smoking that's as per a study we all know smoking is harmful for our lungs and drinking alcohol is dangerous for our liver so we know that kills so many people gives a lot of cancers a lot of health problems but very few of us know that junk food does almost the same as per this study it is even doing more harm than the smoking so if you saw i think in the video they have said that um, if you uh, roll up the sleeves of these kids and as well give heroin because it's the same as giving sugar sugar giving sugar and giving heroin is almost causing the same harm and that is the extent of a powerful statement so we need to be aware of all these foods all these food have excess sugar excess fat excess protein and besides all these preservatives and chemicals which we have this problem or hence we come to the final habit which is the must have the third habit and that is nothing but let me show you the slide okay just eat only whole when we say whole what we actually mean is that don't refine any foods we need to have foods in its most natural form without removing the peel without removing the skin as much as possible for example we eat carrots we keep the skin we have uh, apples we eat the skin and wherever possible unless it is bitter and hard so you have a lot of fiber naturally a lot of proportion of all the nutrients in the right form then you are you're not likely to go problem so for example you don't refined sugars they are not only have uh, no nutrition left they also have a lot of chemicals same thing goes with oil there are so many things some of them are a deep subjects by itself but don't worry all these are possible all the alternatives are uh, dairy are there all the alternatives for this preservative free food is there all the snacks you can dream of think of ice creams pizzas whatever you can think of everything is possible with this whole food you only are maybe not aware this talk is to make you think make you aware so that you can make the right choices okay that's the three habits and uh, that's it for today i wish you all a very very great health for the rest of your life for you and for the whole family bye bye